Welcome back to the Kings of Horror. Every day throughout the month of October, Ryan and I are looking at movies based on the works of Stephen King in the horror genre. And today we're reviewing Riding the Bullet. Horror takes the back seat here as director Mick Garris, returning to Stephen King territory, introduces us to young Alan Parker. Upon hearing his mother has been hospitalized, Parker leaves school and hitchhikes over 100 miles home to see her. Along the way, he meets various strange characters, including George Staub, played by David Arquette. Staub presents him with a choice that could mean life or death for Alan's mother. Riding the Bullet is one of Mick Garris' stronger works. I think that he brought a lot of uh, uh, visual panache to the, pro uh, to the project. Um, I think it's because it's a little bit more personal. I think it has a little bit more heart. The only problem I have with Riding the Bullet is it's not very memorable. You know, I, I actually remember it just fine, thank you very much. Well. But, I, but I will say this, I, do, I think it's, of all the Mick Garris work I've seen, and I've seen most of it, I yeah. think this is definitely his strongest work, and it doesn't feel like he's stretching his resources too thin. No. Here he can really focus on a character with a very interesting emotional journey throughout this film. Yes. He's, he's got a weird relationship with death. He kind of romanticizes it. And over the course of a night of very extreme circumstances, he completely switches around and becomes a calmer, more mature person. Sure. And I like that. And I dug that. And it's got this sort of manic... Not quite as good as Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, but it's got the kind of 1960s crazed, drug-induced energy to it yes, for a I lot like, of it, and I like that yeah. a lot. I like the I like the period setting. I like the yeah, what you're talking about. I love all mm -hmm. that stuff. Uh, the problem is, is I think that there's just not enough material to stretch into a feature. Um, yeah, you know, it's one of those like we said a couple episodes. It's one of those movies that could be condensed down to probably like a 30 minute like Amazing Stories episode or something. This like would be that. great, Amazing Stories. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, it is a little stretched. I'll grant you that, but I don't think that means it's not interesting, and I don't think that means it's not good. Well, it certainly and affects I, the way that I felt about the film, Bibbs. Well, yes, it does, Ryan, but <laughs> I just don't think it's, I don't just don't think it's necessarily to the detriment. Yeah. We both, we both said the same thing about Thinner, and we both like right. Thinner. Yeah. You know, so here's a film that I think has so much heart, and it feels like Mick Garris is really emotionally involved in it yes. more than he is and technically, and that, yeah. And that really comes out, and I feel I, I I felt something while I was watching it, absolutely, which I don't usually get while well, watching a Mick Garris joint. Well, it goes <laughs> a Mick Garris joint. I like that, um, and he'll laugh at that too. Okay, good. Um, I think that, like you said, I think it's because of the focus of the piece, mm -hmm. because he doesn't have to deal with the ensemble of the stand. He doesn't have to deal with the uh, you know the craziness of redoing The Shining, or, or just doing like a hundred different locations in yes. what can only yeah, be yeah, like yeah. a month of shooting. The only yeah. my only problem is that as much as I like David Arquette at times, he is. Is I think a little <laughs> miscast here. Yeah, but you know what? I think maybe not because in the end, I don't feel like he's necessarily that threatening. I feel like he's almost like well, that's he, the thing. You know, like, like a, a, he's yeah. teaching a valuable lesson more than anything else. Yeah, I don't and... want a Mr. Rogers. I want I want I want a threat. You <laughs> well, know? Okay, how creepy would it have been if they got Mr. Rogers? That would have been weird. <laughs> that, right? That would have been highly <laughs> effective. Riding the Bullet is a somewhat underappreciated film. Like practically no one saw it. It was barely released. But it, I think it's worth checking out if you think you've seen everything Stephen King's done on the big screen. I think it's a fun film. I think it's a thoughtful film. I give it three kings. Uh, I disagree with you on the king count, but I definitely agree that if you uh, call yourself a tried and true Stephen King fan and have not seen it, give this a look. Um, you know, I think that, like we said earlier, there's a lot of heart to it. Garris brings some uh, strong visuals. I'm probably going to give this two and a half out of five kings. All right. Cool. And uh, whatever you do, don't forget to come back tomorrow because we're going to be looking at a little film called 1408. We're nearing the end, Bibbs. <gasps> We're nearing the end of this. I know. I'm going to miss you so much. Hold me. <laughs> Hold me. <laughs>